Nancy Smith, a certifying elite director with Donna Dewberry's One Stroke painting process. So with that said, let's get started. I showed you the bottles of paint, but as we paint, I'll show you the colors I'm working with. But a closer view here is it's a folk art, just like a normal two ounce size bottle and it has terracotta right up here. It, the paint gives you the look of terracotta. And uh, the first project I'm going to show you is this. This was a Yankee candle jar. You know, I removed the lid. But if you can see, it, it looks just like terracotta. It had, And filling it, it has the texture, the like the stucco mess of it, you know, so it, it, it looks like an interesting paint. Okay. To do to do this, you need to have um, a, like a drip pan. I'm not an pour acrylic painter. So those of you that know how to pour acrylic you, you'll be able to do fabulous things and you probably have all the equipment, but I, I'm using this re disposable aluminum pan. Fortunately, I hadn't made it to Goodwill this month, so I got a rack. This was from my old microwave, but it's gonna be perfect for that. So I have um, the drip pan and the stand. Now, like I said, I was painting on a, a jar, a Yankee candle jar. So there's some preparation work that you need to do with that. Let's see if I can adjust this here. There we go. It's a little better. Now, their instructions say that you should um, sand the glass before you paint on it. And truthfully, I don't know how to sand glass. I, this is just plain old sandpaper. And you know, I don't really know if it's doing too much. There must be a special way to do that, which I don't know. So I just cleaned it with our rubbing alcohol like we always do with our glass and enamel paints. I just took the alcohol, rubbed it real well, well got, got rid of all the grease and the dirt. And this has already been cleaned. For this project, I was going to use rose, earthy rose as my first color, my base color. So I'll take this paint and put some on my paper plate, on my palette. Now I made two base coats. The first one, I am just going to sponge. I, I'm also going to, because I I'm using a sponge with a lot of paint, I'm going to just put on a pair of gloves. The sponge I did not wet because I didn't want anything to um, deter the, the sticking of the paint onto the glass. Um, I'm like enamel paints, we don't want to use water or any other uh, liquid because it would it breaks the properties of the paint so with that in mind i was going to go straight with the terracotta and a dry sponge now you can use a spouncer or you could use your flat brush but i chose to use um, a, one of our one stroke sponges from our sponge set and i'm just going um, just pouncing the paint now, if you notice, I'm not leaving any openings. I am doing a nice coat of this, um, nice coat of this pouncing. And, you know, you don't have to go that slow. Just, just pounce it. I, I, um, okay. I am going to show you a mistake I made on my samples when I was practicing before our live about that deals with this um, sanding of the glass. 
like I said, I just wasn't sure how that worked and I didn't have time to contact anybody to find out. So there you go, real quick. The one thing about this paint, it takes a good hour to dry and don't you can't rush it. On one, one of the YouTubes concerning terracotta paint, they said that you could use a blow dryer to help speed the process. But on the facts page, the information said, do not use a fan or hair dryer because it could cause uneven drying of the paint, which would cause cracks, not cracks in your glass, but cracks in the paint. So it's better just to set it down, go do something else, start another project and let it dry naturally. And this process did take a, an hour. Uh, it really wasn't a little bit more because it's not real on there thick. So it took me about a good hour. Okay, I'll just set, set that off to the side. And um, I have one that's dry. <laughs> So can you hear it? it? It sounds pretty neat. And like I said, I didn't sand it, but it's it's um it's good on here. There's not it's not coming off. So with this glass and maybe with the rubbing alcohol, you know, it might be good for us. But I do want to show you what I didn't sand, and it's glazed ceramic. Now the instructions say we can do this on glaze ceramic, but it does say you should um, you should sand it. Uh, just real quick, let me check again. Hi Pat, thank you. I know sanding glass. Go figure. Unless there's diamond, you know, sandpaper. Hi Pamela Gilbert, Kath, Kath Katharina, and. Um, whoops, Gilbert, <laughs> you're good, thank you. Okay, but this is, okay, this was a glaze, if you can see inside. This was a glaze pot I had bought years ago, and I just did the base coating, the two base coatings, like I showed you, uh, pouncing, and then um, with the flat brush, which I'm going to show you now, but look, it, 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 it easily comes off. At my hand, my fingernail is just scraping it off. So there has to be something to this. Um, like I said, I didn't uh, get a chance to research why this comes off on the glaze and not on just the regular glass. But it's something to think about. And when I do find the answer, I can add it to our comment section. But this was pretty. I'm sort of disappointed it didn't work because this, this color combination turned out good. So, okay, well here, here I go. This is the first coat, the pounds coat. So now I'm going to, with my flat brush, just do a thin, another layer of uh, paint to just smooth this out. So I have my, we don't need our sponge anymore. I'll get rid of that. I'm just gonna add a little more paint to my, um, palette. Now with this, I did use an old 3 4 inch brush. You can tell it's pretty fluffy. I, I would never can use it now for our one stroke uh, flowers. But I wanted this because it was sort of soft. And um, if it if the paint got if the paint ruined the bristles, I was going to be okay with it because it's so old. But after using this paint, it cleans up perfectly. The uh, the bottle, as well as the fact sheet says it cleans up with soap and water, and that is absolutely true. It, there was there was no residue left over. It even came off of my gel fingernail polish, which multi surface is a little tough to do if you all know that. But uh, this just this just came off real easily. But I did want to wet this or dampen this brush before I used it. This paint is fairly thick. And so just with a touch of water, I thought um, it would go on the surface a little better. So I have my clean water. Oops. 
So I'm just going to dip my brush into my clean water and then dampen it or tap it on the paper towel, get all that excess water off. So then it's real, this goes on real easy. It goes on real fast. Can you, I'm wondering, can you all see this good enough? Maybe if I go on this side, okay. I know I'm, I'm on this different angle of teaching, so I'm, we'll see how it works. But if you can see how smooth it's going on, and you can go real fast. It's, this has, you have to let it dry, like I said, an hour at least, and then you have no problems. If you have some thicker spots that aren't dry, you're gonna pull it up. You're gonna have, you have what we call a hole in the paint and you're stuck. So um, when, and then too, while I'm painting, when I can tell my paint's getting a little dry for me again, I do the same process. I dip my brush in the water, dampen, wipe it off on the paper towel. Where am I? I'm up here. Just dampen it off and then go on. And I'm doing this lightly. I'm not like pressing down real hard. Uh, I'm, I'm holding my brush pretty far back, just very lightly, very quickly, making this second coat. And this coat is really important in my opinion. It just gave a nice smoothness as well as still the terracotta and I'm going to say tuck up, stuck a look that um, this offers. Okay, almost done here. If you have any um, questions, oh good, Kathy, you can see great, thank you. Yeah, I, I feel like I'm in this little dark closet. Okay. I know this is just a demo, but I'll finish it because you got to see the process, right? <laughs> you got to see the whole effect. Okay, so here we go. But do you see how I just how quickly I did a very, very light, um, quick brushing? And it's it's perfect. Now there's like smoothness to it. It still has the stucco on it or the terracotta, I should say. But um, it just has a nice solid coloring now, a nice uh, blend of um, the color there. Okay, now that one again, so another hour. So when you do this, you know, maybe have like five vases going or have several projects going because you really have to just set it aside and let it dry. And I have examples of trying to speed it up and I will show those two to show you as we go throughout the day. Okay, so here's my my jar. It's got the two coats. Oh, this is my powder for my glove. It got two coats. Let me see if I can wipe me off better. And so now it's ready for the uh, pouring. Because I, I did show you the sample, right? This is what I'm going to do, a simple pour. Um, a disclaimer, I've never poured acrylic before. So I did a simple, straight, um, put some paint at the top and let it drip. I did not try to go fancy by turning it, twisting it, or anything like that. This, is, this was just me putting paint up here and letting it go down in streaks. I am sure for those of you that have experience in the pouring process, can come up with fantastic um, samples and please show those to us. I would love to see that. So my brush, I'm done with it. I'm just going to put that away in the dirt, in the water. So for pouring, the instructions are that you use two parts paint and one part water. And the color I want to put on here next is um, Hmm, it was Dusty Trail. It's a really pretty uh, dark tan. Now it says two parts water, one, no, two parts paint, one part water. I tried it all. I tried half and half. 
I tried just a little bit of water and a lot of paint. So I got some good results, some bad results. So I would suggest to always stick to the rules and do the two parts paint, one part water. When you go too thin, like I did right here, do you see how that paint ran? It just, it just sort of like, it, like this one, it was perfect consistency. It's a nice um, streak of paint. It has a nice thickness to it, the texture and everything. But this one, oh my gosh, it spread. It started going out all over the place. So, so much so that I put a second coat of this white, hoping that that would make a better stripe, stripe right here. So um, it, not, it didn't really work that well, but it's sort of a cool effect having the, the thickness here and the, the scatteringness here. But that's, that's, see, that's, the, that's too thin. You don't want to do that. Um, here was another place that I went too thin. Like I said, I also went too thick. Okay, here's an area that I was too thick. It wouldn't even pour. You know, it just sort of stuck there. And then it, I don't know if you'll be able to see it on, on camera, but it is thick. It is thick. It got bumps in it. It got paint chunks. You know, it, then this little bit, I tried to like edge it down to go down a little bit. So it went a little bit, but it's still very, very thick. So play around with it. Um, oh, here's some good spots where the paint was too thick. Uh, play around with it. Make sure that you get a nice consistency that works with you. And so, um, like I said, I'm going to do the dusty trail. Two parts paint. Got to remember that because I started out something wrong. Okay, so there's my one part. Here's my two parts. And I did need quite a bit of paint. And then for what I got, it was I just took a plastic spoon and got a, just a little bit of water there and to make it look like, okay, that might be my one part water there. And I just stirred it and stirred it. And I, I want to say it's almost like when we're adding a dark color to a light color when we're making a puddle of paint and we want we want gray we, and but if we add too much black to it you know we get um we have to start using our whole bottle of white so that's that's what i would suggest on this just practice until you get like what you think is a good consistency i almost think that's a little too runny just a little bit not too much so i'm just going to Put a, one little, little more drop of paint in that. See how that works. Just, just one drop. Okay. So for this, for me, this was really pretty easy. It was, like I said, my first time at doing something like this, and I, I had a lot of fun. So I'm going to bend down a little more so I can see better. But I um, just have... A little bit of paint in my spoon and I'm just going around the edge here there we go and where I want where when I know I want a line I sort of let my spoon stay there a little longer to get more paint to start dripping and I'm just going to go along this line and like I said I did use quite a bit of paint I'm coming back to get some more and I want some paint. I didn't want, you know, like even lines. So I just, whenever, I just let more paint stay on my spoon and go down the jar, go around down. But I thought this was a real pretty color combination. This was, um, have to look again, Earth, Earthly Rose and dusty trail they were there they had said they have 20 colors so um, we were given four um, as our thank you gift like I said 
And so I went ahead and um, just quickly got some more colors so I could experiment with, with what the colors would look like. But I'm painting this on glass and it can be painted on any porous or non-porous surface. My only um, suggestion is on that ceramic or glaze ceramic caution, because I don't know what to do about that. Let me just check um, this. Oh, Kathy, uh, thank you. You like this paint? Yes, I think um, it's going to be great. And it's indoor, outdoor. So we could paint a lot of our old, like terracotta vases or pots outside that got messed up. You can paint this in it. In it. It's like terracotta. Okay, I think, I'm, you know, this is a demo, so I think I'm good. I got that all going around. So um, you need the drip pan because it's going to drip for a while. But if you all can see, I, it was pretty easy. I just went around the face like that. Okay. So let me wipe off my spoon. And now this takes longer than an hour. This took almost two hours, and it and then there's some spots. If there were some little thicker spots, it even took longer. And like I mentioned, do not use a hair dryer because it the it, the paint might dry um, not it's the same. Some parts might dry quicker than others, and it could um, crack on you. And I just noticed I got a couple bubbles right here. So I think I'm just going to tap those. Okay. Okay, so that, we're letting that dry. And in this set case, I wanted to do two colors. So I got my second face already painted. So here we go. And this is with that um, dusty trail. The next color I wanted to add on is... Ter terazotan, okay, for people that know how to speak, let me spell it, T-E-R-R-A-Z-Z-O. There you go. Okay. Same thing I'm going to do. I got my cup, two cups, two, cup, two parts um, paint. And one, two parts paint and one part water. Just, I'm just going to start with a touch of water. Because if you remember last time, I thought I had just a touch of water and I had to add more paint. This one definitely is too thick. So it's just trial and error. And I, I um, I got the wrong color. <laughs> this is for, um, this was for the other, um, should have been um, Adobe White. See how, how it has the nice whiteness. But since I already got it mixed, I'll just add some white to this. And this brings up another topic though. We can mix colors. If there's a color that you want and they don't have it in their um, their palette, you can mix your mix mix your own colors. So this isn't the color I was demoing, but um, it will be pretty and it will be lighter. That's the, that was the key that I wanted. Okay, I just added a little bit of more water because I had to add that extra paint. So I'm going to move that over here a little bit. And here we go. Now for this, because I wasn't, um, oh gosh, yeah, I think we can see, see the difference here. Okay, I tried to unconsciously get the paint be in areas that didn't have paint before. So I'm just going to come around here and let it flow down. It's pretty thick. I'm going to add a little bit more water. If you can see, see that, see that 
bubble going down there. That's pretty, uh, pretty thick. Let me just do some more here. Okay. And you'll find um, some colors are th thinner than the other colors. You know, like when we have our multi-surface paints or our acrylic paints, we'll say some colors seem to be a little thinner than others. I found that the way with this too. The white, that Adobe white was very thin. And I, I believe that's why I always got it's so runny because I'm trying to do the the formula two parts to one part but it would always be a little runny and this is very thick I'm gonna add a touch more water but that might offer a good look I guess have that thickness at the top and not go down <laughs> And like I said, um, you can twist this and turn it and have it all go in neat directions. It would look, it would be pretty nice. So I think I'm good. I just want to add a little bit more here. Okay. Let's see how that looks. It's thicker, but it is running down. So it's going to, it's going to take a little while, but it will go down. So I think that's pretty good. So that's, and I will show us as we go on to the next step, um, how, what happens with it, what it, how it turns out. So let me just check if there's any questions um, on pouring. Okay, good, there's none. So for those of you that are good at this, please let us know your, your success in uh, pouring the terracotta paint. I'm just moving that out of the way because my next um, demo is something I think a lot of people will like. It's using the palette knife and just smearing the paint on. This is my sample for that. So this one's, this one's gonna be a little easier than the pouring because all we have to do is take our palette knife and put on paint. So this was the color combination that I came up with um, for, this, for this vase. So the colors I use, let's see if I get them right this time. It's shale green is the background. And then I have red clay. I'm gonna use that as my first coat. This is my base coat. This is gonna be my first palette color. Then I have the dusty trail. And then finally, I have Desert Dune. Okay. I'm using palette paper instead of our foam plate, only because with the palette knife, it's easier for me to have a flat surface than trying to deal with the plate rim. And I'm just checking my fax notes to see if there was anything I missed while we were pouring. Okay, we got, you know, we can mix the colors. Uh, one thing that we, you can do, the question was, can you seal or antique the terracotta? And the answer was yes, but if you do that, you lose the terracotta look and feel. So you probably may not want to do that. Okay. Now for, like I said, I use a palette knife. For me, this is the size that I'm more comfortable with. It's just a short one, like maybe an inch, inch and a half. It's, um, I don't know, it's, it's one of the ones I probably first use. And more, so this is my go-to palette knife, even though I have one, one in all the different sizes and there's times we got to use the bigger ones. This is what I like to use. Now, you can also use the, the one stroke scrapers, those metal scrapers. This is the small one. Uh, a lot of people can use this very easily. I tend to have difficulty doing that, but everyone seems to at convention, everybody seemed to be able to use it very easily. I don't know why I struggle with that, but 
with using that scraper I did use my scraper for this and you know just to demo real quick you you put your paint on then you scrape like that but if you see I got a lot of lines and stuff in there so for me um, I just tend to not use that but I want to let you know that that's an option to use if you're comfortable with that okay so I got my palette and I got my vase. Now, this, I've already done the coats. The, I've already uh, sponged it, let it dry. I did the first coat with the flat brush. And when it dried, I still wasn't happy with it. I still felt I saw a little too much uh, clearance into the glass or Things didn't have that smooth look that I wanted. And I say smooth, but I, I know you understand. I'm still, it still has a texture to it. It's still a terracotta um, hard, uh, roughness to it. But um, I'm, I guess I'm using smooth as since that it, it wasn't solid. It was, it, it was spotchy. Maybe spotchy is the right word. So I did do another coat on this. So just to know that um, on the red, I just did the two coats, but on the screen, for me, I had to put a third coat on there. So for, for the palette, I'm just going to put a, a puddle of paint there. There you go, this way. Two ways that you can add paint using a palette knife. You can like on the on the edge of your brush go get a bunch a glob of it and then when you keep your brush flat and I do hold it you know loosely in the by the handle um, I have a big glob of paint on there and I'm going to do a flat and then I'm just going to pull now I had a big glob of paint and I just like pulled up do you see what what that is? And that just was full paint there, because I that's the what I was going for that. Now, if I wanted those little sputtering looks to load your palette knife that way, you have your puddle of paint. You you put your puddle your palette knife flat in the puddle of paint. You got paint. Where am I? There. You got paint on the whole bottom of your knife. So then here, I'm flat on the surface, I put it down, I'm pressing a little harder on this one, and I pull up. And do you see how I, now I got the sputters? I do have some thickness here, but I do have sputters. So when you do this, determine how you want, what look you want to do. Do you want a mixture, which was probably what we should do, or do you want all sputters or combat? Or all solid so you just go through just on your face go through like this now on this one how I did it I actually stayed on the side of my palette knife I, I'm on my side I'm at an angle and that way I get a um, combination of solid and sputtering I tend to use my knife more like that I grab paint whoops I grab paint it's mostly on the side and then I'm at an angle my brush, and then I just pull up. Another thing, um, when you're doing any of your projects, whoops, you want to think about how far up do you want to go, you know, on your design. Um, do you want it all near the bottom, or do you want halfway or all the way up? Uh, my sample, I stopped about right here. I think just for this one, I'm going to go all the way up because I think that would sort of look good. So I'll just go up on this. Now I started with a dark color because I wanted that as my bottom color. You can, you, on your colors, just go with whatever look you're looking for. But I did want dark first in this case. So I'll just go. Okay, doesn't take long. Just add some sputtering and solid palette knife paint there. Again, this is going to take a while to dry. 
um, I'm immediately cleaning my palette knife. I'm just wiping it off. If it wipes off, great. See that? It just, it does clean up very, very nice. Um, my experience here in Maryland on a nice, beautiful fall day took about an hour and a half to two hours to dry. Okay. So here I got that done. This is dry. I'm going to do my second color. What I wanted to do was go from dark, medium, and then just do touches of light. So I'll put some paint out there. And just do the same thing. Uh, however you want to use your knife. Now this, this is my second one, uh, second color. I do not want to go over my first color. I just And I just want to add touches here and there. You know, I, I use my dark red as... Um, my my base so this one i'm just and i'm not trying to sputter actually if you notice that i'm just i'm just adding some little colors here here and there and just go around but i i really like palette knife painting i need to do more of that But just go around and around. Okay. So here you go. And I'm like upside down. So okay, I missed that whole little section. But when you're home and you can go study it, study your design, make sure you're getting that look that you really want there. Oh, and this is another thing. You know, I've been showing you flat, you know, flat or on the side. You can if you'd like. Let's say like right here, we want a tall like pipe, a spe spike, spike, that's the word. I can put my brush like that and go like this. So see, then I got like a big um, straight line. And I wanted a like a linear look, but if you want this to go all over the place, you know, sideways, upside down, backwards, whatever, you can do that. Take your knife and then just come over to the side and pull up, you know, just make your, just do whatever design you're looking for, and it, it, it'll always look good. So that was the second coat. Here again, you got to sit and wait or find a new project. Let me look at my um, notes here. And I told you, don't use the hair dryer. You got to let it air dry. Okay, this is important. Um, Drying time can take anywhere from a couple of hours to 24 hours. And then total cure time is between 48 hours to 72 hours. So that little, so that, did I show you that little vase yet? If I didn't, yes, I think I did. This little vase is, um, I painted, I think on Monday and this is Thursday. So it is tough, it's, it's cured now and it is tough. See, I, I can't scrape it off. So this is this turned out really I thought really nice, other than my wet my thinness, but this turned out good. Okay, so let's do that last color. And here's my dry. Now for this color, I just wanted some little highlights of white. I didn't want um, this actually isn't white. It's like a light. It's a sand color. I just added some lightness on the project. That's what this was for, just some lightness. So here I think I do want to try to do some sputtering. So I'm going to put my brush down and sputter. So just, you know, go for it. What you would like. Sputtering can take practice, and this is a, not a flat surface. There's, this vase has um, these little flat portions of the vase, but that's why this knife fits in it perfect. It's a perfect knife for this. 
but um, I, I think this terracotta paint would look fabulous on big old pots, big old vases. And this is one of those kind of paints we can go do those trash to treasure type things. Find a vase that no one wants anymore that's been thrown away. And then you, all you have to do is grab it, paint it, and um, it'll look great. So there you go. Just added a little lightness. Um, okay, so I did this. And when I was painting my final sample, I thought, oh, I, I thought I might have painted over too much red. So I was impatient. Um, Facebook Live was going to start, in, you know, in an hour or so. And so I just thought, whatever, I'm going to paint over it. And so it made a really pretty blend, though. See, this, this right here, whoops, where, is a blend of that color I just painted in the red because I had too much lightness. I wanted to get some more of my red back. This area, I painted over the white so I got a nice blend. And I can demonstrate that right here. So like this, let's say we want to make it more red. I got red on my palette knife. I can blend, I can bring it up here and see I got that really nice blend going there. So, okay, let me check to see if there's any uh, paint questions. Nope. Okay, let me move this out of the way. And I will see you face to face again. And thank you all. Thank you all for joining me today. And I shall see you next week. Okay, bye-bye, everybody.